that morning call. Hey from Hunters, Austin Durant here, and today I'm going to show you how to make classic garlic dill pickles. These cubes came right from my garden, but you know what? As I'm taking a look at this, I don't think that's quite enough to fill this gallon. So I'm going to take matters into my own hands. and go harvest some more cukes. Be right back. All right, just got these buttes fresh from the garden, and I think that's gonna make our full gallon. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is inspect the cucumbers. Really what I'm looking for are two things, visible dirt and the flower end. So the flower end of a fruit like a cucumber contains enzymes that inhibit fermentation. So do your best to just get every little piece of extra flour off of the fruit. You can take the extra step of rinsing them if you want, but uh, I usually don't bother. What I do, what I will do is, if the fruits are lying in the dirt or on the mulch and they have some visible dirt, I will rinse them off. But I like to use them just as they are. As you can see, a fresh cucumber's got that bloom, which is just a set of microbes, yeast, and bacteria. That will actually help us with fermentation. So. I want to minimize the amount of those uh, good guys that uh, we get rid of. And everything here looks to be in order. Just going to make sure I get all the flower ends off. And check for visible dirt. These guys all look pretty good. Quick visual check. Cucumbers are good. Set them aside while we prepare our container. All right, so I've got a one gallon jar that we're gonna be fermenting in. First thing I wanna do is add the spices, the dill, some of the garlic to the bottom of the jar. And then I like to load the cucumbers on top of that. So I've got some fresh dill here. And I like to just uh, use the sprigs and all. Sometimes I'll take the larger stems off, like so. And I don't know about, usually do add about four sprigs of fresh dill per, eh, per quart. So I don't know, I'll probably put half the sponge in there, two to four. And then I like to layer it. So I'm gonna put some of the dill in, set it aside. And you can use whatever spices you'd like. I like to use mixed peppercorns. There are plenty of recipes and spice mixes out there. I also like a little bit of yellow mustard seed. Some brown mustard seeds. And a little bit of celery seed. Next thing I like to do is add garlic. I use about anywhere from two to four cloves per quart. So since we're making about a gallon, and I've got various, maybe about a dozen different little cloves here. And I like to just remove the skins. Sometimes the easiest way to do that is to give them a whack. Sometimes the skin just peels off. This garlic is cooperating today. It's kind of dry out, so the paper's just peeling right off. All right, finished peeling our garlic cloves. Now the next thing I like to use in order to help keep the cucumbers crispy and crisp and crunchy is a grape leaf. Now I happen to have some grape leaves that I froze from last season and I've thawed them out. I have no idea if it's going to work, if they'll be as effective as fresh ones, but let's give it a try. So I've let them thaw. They still have their, uh, they're still kind of green, although they're a little bit, you know, look and smell a little bit like, uh, you know, frozen spinach that's been thawed. So if you're using a fresh leaf, I'd recommend, you know, about, probably about two or three leaves per, uh, per gallon or so. One big leaf if you're just making a quart. So you can use other leaves, 
such as stone fruit leaves like peaches, apricot leaves, apple leaves, really anything that has tannins in it because the tannins in the leaf are what allow the pickle to uh, stay crispy as it's forming. All right, so we've got our herbs, we've got our garlic, got our grape leaf. Now it's time to add the cucumbers. Gonna do my best work trying to pack these guys in. Now typically I like to let the cucumbers grow to only about three or four inches. This guy's a little bit long. He escaped me in my garden, but because I'm using a larger container, it should be fine. But typically about four inches is ideal for this style of cucumber, which is actually made for pickling. You'll see it called the pickling cucumber if you're buying the seeds, or sometimes Kirby, which is the name for it as well. This big guy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the garlic cloves. Although when we add the brine on top of this, it's all more or less gonna float, so it's not that important. I will, however, add a few more sprigs of dill. I like to use a lot of dill. You could also use the flower heads. They contain a lot of flavor. Right now, since I bought these, this dill from the store, I didn't get the flower, but they both work great. So I'm going to try to create a surface that's at the top, it's even and flat. So try to get, if there's any sticking up, try and get those, try and get one flat surface. You might have to rearrange some cukes here. All right, so those are nice and even and flat. Set those aside for a moment. The next step is to create a brine. A brine is simply a salt water solution. And for garlic dill pickles, I like to make a 5% brine. And that simply means 5% of the weight of salt to 100% of the weight of water. And that's a good ratio for doing this style of fermentation. Now you could go a little bit lower if you wanted, or even a little bit higher, but I think 5% is a good starting point. So I'm basically going to measure the water by weight and then add that much 5% salt. All right, so I got about 1,300 grams or so of water. So 5% of that is about 65 grams. So I'm gonna zero the scale again and add 65 grams of salt. Again, it's not, it doesn't have to be super precise. Once we've got the salt added, we're just going to stir it until it dissolves. Now you can get a head start by using slightly warm water or maybe a little bit of hot water mixed in with cool water. That's just gonna make the salt dissolve faster. And just stir it until you don't see any more salt crystals. I like to use just straight up bulk fine sea salt because it dissolves quickly and it doesn't have any other ingredients. You want to avoid any salt, like the table salt that has added minerals like iodine or anti-caking agents that prevent the salt from clumping. Those can both inhibit fermentation. Stirred our brine, I don't see any more salt. 
visible salt in there, so we're ready to go. But one more ingredient we're going to add is a little bit of mature pickle brine from a previous batch. This technique is called back slopping, and you really only need a little bit. So for this whole gallon that we're making, I'm probably only going to put about two tablespoons of pickle brine. And what that does is add some lactobacillus and other bacteria that were successful in the previous fermentation. Just gives it a head start. Don't worry if you don't have used pickle brine. Uh, it'll work just fine without it. So now that I've added my back slop, it's time to top up and cover the cucumbers with the brine. Now, fruits want to float because they're mostly water. So what I also like to do is uh, advocate using a weight to sit right on top of the vegetables. In this case, I've got a, uh, a bottle of water kefir that's weighty and made of glass, and it fits right inside the diameter of this jar. And that's perfect size to keep all of the cucumbers from floating up. If stuff gets above the surface, that's where yeast and molds can form. So now I just want to do a little quick check. It looks like everything's okay. I'm going to pull out the weight, just top up with brine, and then add the weight back. Looks like we're just perfect on the brine amount. Maybe I want to stuff that guy under there. So now we're ready to go. Last thing I want to do is take a clean dish towel or tea towel and wrap the whole thing. And that's because if we don't, in a few days, flies will get come to the party and they are an unwelcome guest because they're going to lay eggs and raise families here. And that's not really what you want when you're making a batch of pickles. All right, so it's fly, keeps flies out. It still lets the carbon dioxide escape. We've got everything weighted under the brine. So now we wait. Anywhere from, say, 7 to 14 days, sometimes longer if it's cooler where you are, and it'll be ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and put the date on. A label and also label what it is although in a glass jar it's sometimes obvious but you never know all right I labeled my jar and now it's time to put it up and come back and check on it in about a week